Hi, Michael. What's going on, man? How are you? Pretty good. Nice Welcome to see you. Sit right there, buddy. Down. Welcome. Yeah, man. Right on. Welcome to the show. We were just talking about uh, the woman. What's her name? Dolores what? Went Claiborne. Down. From the Cranberries. Oh. Um, and from the Cranberries? What do you mean? She passed away, the lead singer of the Cranberries. I, I didn't... Uh, what the... F really? Yeah, did yeah. you know her? Whoa, no. I didn't know yeah. her personally, but oh. I knew her music. Yesterday. Yeah. She was 46. That's really young. Yeah, and wow. she uh, she passed away. They don't know. Uh, they haven't announced the cause or anything, but they're saying it's not suspicious. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if she was sick or anything, but it could have been suicide. They don't know. Sorry. They're well, trying to I mean, that's them. kind of funny. Like it's either one or the other, right? Right. Don't you think? Yeah, it's either it's either accidental or it's not. Or it's she not. Was, she was found dead in her hotel room, and Jim theorized it could have been a car wreck. I didn't know. I forgot the hotel room. <laughs> I don't I think they it weren't was a saying car like wreck. who knew. It could be suicide. It could be a, a heart attack, or it could be a car wreck. And they pointed out there was a hotel room. <laughs> That's too Which many could, options, man. I quickly like, removed the car. It could wreck. have been an insect bite. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you were in a band. I was. I was. Uh, I mean, for a while, I uh, you know I was in this band called Nico Vega, and before that, the Wells, and you know we did some touring and stuff, and which I loved. Uh, and I thought I was gonna. I thought I was basically gonna be in a band for the rest of my life, which w wouldn't have been a bad gig. What'd you do? I was a drummer. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I mean, but I, it's because I was getting all these like gangster parts, you know, in acting, and basically I was working like a a month out of the year. So I was like, you know, you know, and I was doing music the rest of the year. So I was like, eh, I'm just gonna do that. So at what point were you like, oh, I'm not gonna do this music thing anymore? Well, here's the thing. I did, you know, I I worked on this movie Crash. Right. Worked on it for four days. Right. Right. Didn't think anything. You were only it. in that for on, on four. That was a four, four day shoot days, for you, dude. I'm like, I made like no money. That's one of my favorite films of all oh, time, dude. Thank one you. One of I my, my that. favorite things ever is Crash. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's cool. Um, so I did that movie for four days. I was in it for four days, uh, and I was like, oh, this is really cool, man. I love it. It's it's one of the first times that I actually got to do some good writing. Um, and then I didn't think anything of it. And then, um, you know, I was doing music, music, music. Um, we got offers from, a, you know, a couple little labels, but it wasn't a, a big deal. And then, you know, there was a premiere and then I took the band of the premiere and the lead singer, Asia Volkman says, you're going to, you're going to be an actor. I was like, no way. Because I, I, I hardly worked, you know, I right. worked, I worked literally five weeks, four weeks out of the year. And, and like here and there, it's not and like this five week chunk. Dude, yeah, it was like a and I was four doing, days over I was here. Doing a gangster from New York, yeah, gangster from L.A., all the all the different accents, gangster from Chicago. So like it wasn't, you know, I didn't think anything was going to come of it, to be honest. And you did Crash, which obviously Paul Haggis directed. Now yeah. there's all this stuff happening with him. And what was your relationship like with him? I mean, again, four days is hard to say, but you also did Million Dollar Baby. Yeah, I mean, it was great, man. I'm like him and Bobby Moresco actually directed the movie, and it was really cool. Like he was. You know, I'm like, I thank him for, like, he wrote a great, great part, and then he wrote a, an amazing monologue, so I was, like, really thankful. So and did every, so you're saying, but after Crash is when everything changed, like, people started, because obviously that won Best Picture, and it became the movie that year, and is that when people started being like, oh, he's not just the guy doing bit gangster parts, Michael Pena is a guy who we can count on to do other do stuff. Do other gangster <laughs> parts because i actually played a gangster in that movie as well like, but it was an ex-gangster right you know oddly locksmith, enough yeah you know crazy i'm like man it was like you're taking me back it was literally like a crazy dream that one year because i'm i i lived in a shoebox i mean my apartment was smaller than this you know wow. he's pointing at sam's dick yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's small man no dude i didn't mean that i'm like no but it, actually be so rude and forward was, of you it was, first time we've met it was half it was half the size of this you it's know really okay. and i lived in la which they had a small <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm like, I, that's not what I meant. I'd be like, man, Michael <laughs> Pena is very familiar. Son of a <laughs> <laughs> so, no, so you're living in this tiny apartment. And like... then, no, so yeah. So, and then, you know, I, I got to meet Oliver Stone. And when you're, you know, I love movies, man. I just love them. Like, you know, my family, we used to go every Sunday. And that was the thing. Spend a dollar twenty five on like, you know, Latin movies or Spanish movies, I meant. And then, you know, they would have the one English movie. You know, like the Field of Dreams or something cool like that, you know? Um, and so that was a dream of mine. And then I met Oliver Stone. And Oliver Stone is, you know, wants to meet you for uh, a movie. And I was like, oh, for what is it? And I read the script. It was for World Trade Center. And it was like, it was like Will Jimeno and Emma McLaughlin. And that was like one of the two leads. I was like, for what part? So for Will Jimeno. I, I, I was, it changed my life. I was speechless, obviously. And then I met him and, you know, we had a good meeting and then, you know, I got the offer and I was just, you know, I remember sitting at home and not knowing what to think. How much pressure is it in one of those meetings? Because it's a meeting. It's not an audition where it's like you can practice the part. They just want to get to know you. So, like, how do you 
How do you prepare? Like, what's your strategy going in? To like, be honest with you, there was no uh, pressure. No pressure because I thought there's no way in the world I'm going to get this part. I see. Yeah, so I was like... You think it's just a cool man, a chance to meet it, Oliver Stone? Dude, right. but if you met Oliver Stone, I've seen every one of his movies. Yeah. You know, I studied that guy, and I'm like... And, and at the, at, you know, there at a certain point, you think, I'm not even going to study this guy because I'm like... I. You know, it's, he's too far advanced. He's too much of a of a gr great director for me to even let me just enjoy it. And then, uh, I but but I did see. I'm like, how did he use his actors? Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. That's really cool. So I met him more as a fan and than anything. And I just got like you know a free interview. Because it seemed like it was the the part was way too big. It'll never happen. So never just happened. enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, you know, you're gonna give it to somebody who's like whatever. Another film you should have won an Oscar for. It's one of my favorite comedies ever, uh, with Seth Rogen. Yes. Observer <laughs> Report. <laughs> so great. I can never stop talking about how fucking funny that movie was because it was so mean. Ray Liotta was great in that. I hate your oh, fucking Rick. guts. That Dude, movie so made me funny, laugh. That guy, but Aziz Ansari was really funny in that as well. That's right. Aziz yeah. was in that. Yeah. You know, when he's spreading the lotion on the, like, <laughs> oh man, he was so funny. Putting fingers in the girl's mouth. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> different deal. Yeah, different side. <laughs> yeah, I forgot he was in it. He had that big scene with Seth where they're going, fuck you. Is it, or fuck you. What were they saying back and forth? Oh, I don't know. You could say that on, on oh, okay, yeah, yeah. radio. Oh, yeah. That's what they were doing, right? Yeah. Oh, no, but I, I didn't know you could say that on radio. Sure. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> you said you said sure with pride. Well, oh, yeah, sure. on our channel's oh, yeah. uncensored. You can say what you want. We worked very uh, very hard at making sure we can say fuck you all day if we want to. Uh, just, <laughs> uh, God, it's just so weird for me for me like, in the uh, in radio. radio environment. But yeah. you've been in some cool movies, man. You've been in some really really well, great films. I was gonna like, so you get there right, and like you find out you get this part from Oliver Stone, and you're like, I don't I don't even know what's going on. You're still yeah. in this like weird dream of like yeah. I don't know what's happening. What's it like to work with him? Once you get on set. Well, I mean, I, once they said, once they said that I got the part, and you know, I started rehearsing. I'm not going to lie. I was, I was nervous. That's when the nerves kicked in. Man, I was thing. so nervous I couldn't even look anybody in the eye. I was, I was like, I must have looked like some kind of crackhead. I stayed away from coffee. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I was freaking out, and I was still really nervous the first two, three weeks of, of filming. Um, and plus, you got to understand, like in Crash, I'm like, it was only three scenes. Right. I only really did three scenes. That was my biggest part to date. You know, and I was really good at saying like, oh, he's over there. Or, you know, <laughs> just one liners here and there. It's like, right there. He's like, I am, sir. Or, you know, getting arrested or whatever. And so it was like uh, the first time that I had a lot of dialogue as well, like in, in a lot of scenes. So I'm like, it was a it was a huge gradient to jump. What was I mean, the first scene you shot? Oh, man, that's a good question. Or do you remember the first the first take you fucked up? Like with Oliver Stone, Nicholas Cage? I, I didn't. I didn't. None. What I did is I rehearsed. For weeks and weeks oh, okay. and weeks, and made sure that I, that I that I was doing a kind of like a play because it's your, it's your, you know, you feel like it's your big shot. Sure, I'm like, and look at this. I'm like, almost shaking now. Just thinking about just it. Thinking they can, about and it. they can replace you, right? Like that's oh, the way. They, and and they can replace you very quickly. So even when you get the role in your head, like you're all nerved I, out. So there's nothing in you that says I'm you gonna be, be in fired. this movie. Yeah, because if you think about it, like you know, after a week. You know, we're we're shooting for twelve weeks and it's a sixty million dollar budget. Right. You know, and, and some of it is, is based on this new kid. And they can just whenever they want pull the plug and say, you know what, we're just gonna shoot his coverage, you know, his side of the <clears throat> of the camera and just like let him be gone. You know, like, which has happened a lot. If they can replace Harvey Keitel in um, in Apocalypse Now or uh yeah. he was Wait, he, what, he, he originally had the lead. Before before Martin Sheen got it, that was Harvey Keitel. But did they film anything? Oh yeah, and I don't know how long they shot for, but it's like Eric Stoltz in, uh, Have in you seen Back to yeah, the yeah, Future. Yeah, yeah. Back to the, the Future movie yeah. with Eric Stoltz. They can they sometimes will go. Let's cut our losses and just go back and redo it. Yeah, because they're thinking of like and they and they're protecting their investment. You know right. what I mean? And and half of the investment is in post production. It's it's, it's getting the the right music. It's you know editing it. You know whatever. And, so they, you know, they got to take care of the money. So the table read, you read through the whole thing. I was on a series for two seasons recently called Power. Oh. I didn't go to one table read. Because you were doing this? No, because I'm like, they're going to fire me in the table read. <laughs> oh, I, how I, did you get out of it, man? I, well, I was legitimately busy, but I, like, I had like other stuff, and they would always let me know. Like, I had stuff. I'm I, waiting I, for the wink. I was like, legitimately busy. No, no, I did have <laughs> stuff, but I probably could have moved some of it. Um, <laughs> but I'm like, fuck that. I'm not giving these guys a chance to fire me. I just knew they were going to fire me. If I was <laughs> right, right. Read. You get that that's what's weird man and i still get it like with every freaking movie and like oh man like it's um i feel blessed you know what i mean to be able to to, to keep my jobs
So have you gotten? But have you gotten comfortable to a point yet where you no. like feel you? So you don't feel no. like the the big parts are like I'm. I feel like they could take it away at any at any time. Yeah, yeah. like at any time, it, it, you know, it could be over. Because it seems like every time you get one, like you hit it out of the park. Like End of Watch was amazing too. Well, you know what? I that's where Crash really really helped me out. It was like I you know they. I don't know. For some reason, it's kind of like a club or, or whatever. Like, oh, he's good in this, and it's a good movie, and it won the Oscar, which is a, a blessing. Um, and then they, you know, you you kind of get better writing, right? And then so, I remember reading uh, End of Watch, and I I got to be honest with you, I didn't understand the story, but I I really wanted to be in this movie. I don't even know how much I got paid for it, you know? And mm -hmm. those are the best movies for me where I'm like, I don't care how much the pay is. I'm like, I just would love to be in this movie. You know, I got a nine-year-old kid, and I'm just thinking, I just want him to be proud of, my, proud of me. Right. You like, want him to be able to look at your work and be like... Or just, I mean, just be proud of your own work. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's... But when you read a great script, and, it, and you're just there dumbfounded with how great it is... And you just want to be in that movie. At some point, you are. I guess you get to the point where, like, you don't want your kid to be like, "Yeah, my dad's an actor. He's like this gangster over here in the corner <laughs> of this movie." Like, yeah, when pause, he, pause. There he is. There yeah, he is. when he sees my earlier work, he's like, "Yeah, that's him behind the behind the other guy." Behind the other guy. <laughs> yeah. Who is the guy? Who is the guy who would always play guy? He was in Blood In, Blood Out. Uh, he's been in a million. He played. He was. I think he was a Mexican. He played the, the. He always played a gangster. He was in the same role. Danny Trejo. No, no, not Dan Shue. It was another guy. Uh, can we look at Blood, Blood and Blood Out? The, the, the uh, he's a Latin actor. I think he passed away. No, no as soon way. as you see him, he's in everything. You're like, oh my god, that guy! And he almost always played a gangster. You know what's funny? I don't know what Troy's been googling, but he put Blood in, Blood out. You know, and in the autocomplete, it said Blood in, and the autocomplete was stool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what? First of all, he's googling his lunch. <laughs> 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 That's Wait, not that no, not him. Right? No, no, not, not him. That is disgusting. The old Benjamin Bratton. You know what? Would be, you know, it's surprising. Fuck. Some of these guys that always play gangsters, and that's why I feel blessed and I feel lucky. Um, I don't know if it was Blood in and Blood Out, or maybe it was another. Go to movie, Colors. Right? Sorry, Colors. He was Colors. In Colors, not Blood and Blood Colors, Out. Colors. Colors. Some of these guys like went to Juilliard, and like and Benjamin Bratt did. Like there, Benjamin Bratt. Yeah. Or like the guy in uh, what's his name? Uh, um, God, I can't believe he's he's actually a buddy of mine. He was in End of Watch. Well, maybe not that one. Nope. Maybe not that one. <laughs> but Don Cheadle was in Colors? That was Don Cheadle. Don that. Cheadle. Yeah. Don Cheadle. Wow, in the, in the fucking front left, I, he's playing a gangster. Jake Gyllenhaal strikes me as like a pretty intense dude. He's great, man. I mean, I don't know him aside from watching him in movies, but he great seems dude. like he completely like falls into these roles. Especially like, you know, as, as time has gone on, it seems like he, he for a second, could have gone the route of heartthrob guy and decided to specifically go in a different direction and he's take on smart. these really intense. He, he's too smart. Yeah. he's like a really intellectual guy, but like he, you know, he re and he really cares about the movie. I got it. I, you know, he he was just instrumental in me and 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 end of watch because it was again one. You know, that was another. I haven't had a, you know a co starring part in a while. Um, or whatever, because I'm like, I, there was something with the writer's strike, you know, I was doing these kind of movies, and then writer's strike, and then any movies stopped being made, so I'm like, you know, for two years, two, three years, I, I had to start over again, it felt like, and then, wow, and he was really awesome about it, he's like, dude, if there's a scene, you know, that, like, just chew it up, man, just chew it up, it's your scene, and how many lead actors do that? Like, yeah. You, there's not a lot, I, I have to be honest, there's been times where you've been pulled aside, and you're like, can you, can you... Really? Can you tone it down a bit? You know, this is his scene. This is yeah. Her, yeah. Is that embarrassing yeah. when they do that? No, you understand. You understand because it's like you know they they have to carry the movie, sure, right? And then I, for me, the 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 attitude of the of the supporting actor is that you have to affect the 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 lead actor. You know what I mean? So that they they just react. They're reacting. They're reacting. Well, you have to do, you have to do enough to make them react the way they need to react. Yeah, they need to react and not overdo it. It's just amazing because like it just seems like such a trip because. Obviously, being in movies is like a huge ego boost, right? Like when people know you as this guy from a movie, that'll do things like it would do things to my ego. But you have to maintain like a s huge degree of humility to survive being on a movie set because you have to understand stuff like that. Like yeah. when somebody comes up to you, not take that personally. A, a, a lunch yeah. is a lunch. It doesn't mean you're getting the role. Bobby, right. You know what I mean? No, yeah, man. I, to be honest, I mean, I, I struggled for 17 years, and then it's been happening for you know the last five, six years or something like that. So. 
Um, I count my blessings because I mean, there's buddies of mine that have been that I've been you know going auditions with for years and years and years, and uh, they never got the the break, and and they're you know I just as good if not better, right? Um, or whatever, and for some reason you know the you know it just rolled the way it did, and so you can't help but be humble, but also like you see the people that are not. Um, and they, they're bored with acting and they don't like acting and you're like, oh, I don't want to be one of those guys. Yeah. I, you know, if, if I, if at one point I just don't like acting and don't have the passion for it, then I'll just leave and do something else. Start drumming again. I still, I just got a, a CNC, um, drum, drum kit. Um, and it's it's being delivered to my house this week. I can't wait to. Yeah, but you don't want to fuck up your shoulders. Your old, drummers always have these weird injuries: shoulder, I do, elbow man. injuries. I got yeah. my my left because it's I do cross handed, right, like traditional, like that. Right. So I'm like, which for me, I'm like, I just I'll just sit twenty minutes, like going. The way drummer, the way drummers, the traditional holding the stick, the way jazz drummers do it, which I guess is called cross hand, which is like one upside down and one tap. It's the most uncomfortable looking thing I've ever seen. Like, yeah, because then you got to learn, you know, just. And then keep doing other things. That's a lot yes. of coordination. Yes. yes. Uh, I have a question for you, too, about uh, season four of my one of my favorite shows. Is oh, Narcos. yeah, yeah, yeah. Narco is the best thing on Netflix. They ended season three, and it looks like now he's going to, uh, uh, what's the, the lead's name? Uh, uh have your Pablo Escobar? Pa no, no, no. Oh. The, 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 the Paul something. <laughs> like the, you clearly don't watch the show. Paul, uh, what's no, no? Who's the, the lead actor? Uh, uh, it's uh, Pascal. Pascal, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pascal, Pablo, Pedro, Pascal, Pedro, Pablo. Is it? Yeah, okay. um, I believe so. I think it's Pedro. Pesca. I think it's Pedro Pascal. Or, no. or whatever. It's one. It's, am it's I wrong? Pascal. You might be right. It's Pedro. Um, God damn it! Am I wrong? Yeah. Pedro Pascal. All oh, right. I was hey, oh. like, Jim doesn't watch the show. I do, but I I, I knew there was a P in it. Now <laughs> it's supposed to take place Just in like Mexico, uh, season four. I don't know. What are you allowed to say about it? I dude, I can't say anything. I okay. Can't say Can I say part? this? Are you done shooting? No. Hey. Uh, Can you see the hair? That's, is, okay. that for, is that for Narcos? Yeah. That's so cool. Oh it's kind of weird. I'm not used to having the... Let me look at the hair and figure out who he's playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, now, let me ask, because there, there was a problem. Netflix, their, their location scout was killed in Mexico Yeah. while he was looking for... Now, again, I don't know if they've ever established why. It could have been wrong place, wrong time. Maybe he was up to something, or maybe it was just he didn't ask the right permission to go in. So let me ask you, wherever they decided to shoot, were you nervous being in any locations? Well, I mean, just, you know, from our conversation before, I'm nervous anyway. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's, uh, there's a lot of pressure uh, when you're, you know, it, you're reading your lines by yourself, like in, you know, in the hotel and like making, trying to make sure like you do some, that you're okay. And then there's like a hundred people seeing sure. what you were planning on. So that's nerve wracking. And then there's, um, you know, I did a movie before. It's called Chavez, Cesar Chavez um, in, in Mexico. And it's not as bad as they say. You know what I mean? That's like, you know. Where in Mexico did you shoot? Uh, Hermosillo, it's called Hermosillo, Sonora, um, and there's there is some you know some cartel activity there. But the thing is, is that unlike unless you're involved um, with or against the cartels, they don't they don't mess with you. Like they wouldn't want to kill the customer. No, but they're the more kidnapping. They do a lot of kidnapping. Yeah, that's but the scary that's part. that's on a whole other level, and that's where you get security. So did you have security with you? I you do said? have security. How many how many guys do you have with you? Um. Three. Three guys? Okay, wow. armed guys well, at all times. Well, it's a driver and then security and then like the quote-unquote assistant. Um, and then Who so, is able to also yeah. double as security. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. yeah this the guy, is the guy that will tell me what time it is like, to break for lunch and he has an, M, uh, yeah. an M16. All right, yeah, yeah, he, he raises the gun. He's like, <laughs> it's good now. Yeah. That's yeah. scary though. I mean, especially... It is scary. The, it is scary, but you know, I it's kind of thing where I've been doing it for 22 years now and my first film was like, you know, I was in Asheville, North Carolina. I was the only Mexican dude there, so there's a fear there. Sure, sure. Um... And then, uh, you know, I was in Serbia, like, you know, last year. What'd you shoot there? Um, this, thing, this movie called Extinction for Universal. Um, and so you travel, you know what I mean? It's just a way of life, I guess, but it's... Well, you have to figure they do. I know we talked to a guy, Jeff Ross, a comedian who did a shoot down at Jeff the border. Jeff Ross is funny, man. Very funny. He's funny. And he's ballsy, because Jeff will do comedy anywhere. Yeah. And he said that they're... Roast you know, comedy. Yes, where he's shitting on people. Yes. And I think that he was in Juarez, and I imagine there's oh, some... he does all the roasts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. There's a place where they... they in the, a lot of these places, you kind of have to clear it with the cartel that you're going to be there, because the cartel is even more powerful than the police, and you have to no let way. the cartel know you're going to be there, so... Wherever you were or were not shooting, they may have had yeah. to clear that with uh, with with people on that side. Wow, it's amazing. Uh, uh, You're freaking me out now, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, because you got to go back. Yeah, to I got to go back. That's right. So at least we know he's in Mexico. Yeah. Like, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I got to tell you, I'm like I, I I read the scripts 
Uh, and I, I'm just excited about this as I am with like you know something like a End of Watch or, or Crash. You or are. It's really really like good that. writing. I mean, I'm amazed. Like Eric Newman and the gang, like they they you know they they really pride themselves in in, in these scripts, and they take the, a lot of time. They're not just like running on auto. Are you a good guy or a bad guy? I can't tell you. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, I got long hair though. Yeah, long hair makes me believe. I mean, he could be a cop. <laughs> But, might be, yeah, he might be an undercover. But, see, the problem is, like, if this were you years ago, we'd know you'd be typecast. You'd be, yeah, like, yeah, a gangster or a drug dealer or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now you do cop or gangster or drug dealer. Yeah, like, no, you've done yeah, all that. Exactly. So I don't know. I don't know. But I feel like it is, the hair Absolutely. is more like a, um, a, 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 drug, a guy who's made money in crime. He's not playing El Chapo. He's oh, not yeah, playing he's El Chapo. Yeah. He's got, right. and, and you don't have the right face for El Chapo unless they really made you. I mean, I got they a big round Mexican face. I'm like, it's pretty. <laughs> I mean, how much? Now, El Chapo's chubbier, and uh, I say that with all due respect. Yeah. Um, I mean, but the, the the camera adds. T- I mean, don't mess with my ty- with my casting here, man. That's like, a good point. <laughs> that's What's a up? great yeah. point. I can play El Chapo. <laughs> By the way, they have a series on Netflix called El Chapo. It's oh, not yeah. as good as Narcos, but it is really good. And the guy yeah. who plays him does a fucking great job. Yeah. There's other there's other like spinoffs. I, I think I've seen that one as well. Um, that they use that model, um, with, you know, with the you know some of the font footage or whatever. And the real footage, footage of it, yeah. The real footage. I mean, it's 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 a it's a great model, and that you know, Narcos is the one that made that up. Where they let you? Know, I've never seen anyone do it besides Narcos, and and I and I love that they would do that. Like in season one, the guy's name I'm saying it wrong. I think uh, Louis Gomez played him. Uh, a, a, a gotcha. Guzman. Oh, oh, Guzman. Sorry, yeah. he's of funny Louis too. J. Gomez. Yes, he's I the am. one to know the Paul, <laughs> Thomas, <laughs> Paul Thomas Anderson movies, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, he's amazing. Yeah. He wanted awesome. to be a porn star in fucking Boogie Nights. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was awful. He Boogie coming Nights at him with was ideas. Was yeah. He's the dialogue. Hey, baby, where are you going? He was awful. Yeah. Luis Guzman he's is good great. He's great in everything he's in he everything. does. Fucking Q&A with Nick Nolte. Did you ever see that? No. Come on. Oh, it's great. <laughs> Timothy Hutton's in it. Nick Nolte plays a fucking a corrupt Irish cop who's attracted to transsexuals. What? Cop after my own heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the season one, is, uh, whoever played that, they, they show like the real footage of guys yeah. getting caught. And you can see they're different than the actors, and that didn't hurt the show at all. Mm-mm. Yeah, actually I mean, strengthened uh, the show. Funny enough, with, like, yeah, I mean, like, uh, as long as you speak Spanish and you have the, you know, the the willingness to speak Spanish, because Guzman, isn't he like Puerto Rican or something? I don't I think know. So. Yeah, and he was in Colombia. He's like, hey, papi, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> Doing that thing, and it was still awesome. <laughs> yeah, most people can't, like, I can't tell the difference between a lot of accents. Uh, like, a lot of people can't tell the difference in American accents. They just know yeah. you're American. Well, I don't know, man. Can they? Because I'm like, I, the I, South, I, yeah. I feel like, yeah, I feel like the New York South and then, like, Middle America and then there's, you know, the, the, the West Coast. Like, Do you think most people who are not from here can tell the difference? Maybe they can and I just... I think they can because huh. of the movies. I mean, because, I mean, that's one of our biggest exports is movies. Right. You know, and that's why, like, in England or whatever, like, they can speak, they can do our accent because they grow up watching, and, like, most of the movies are, are made by Hollywood, by, yeah. even, like, American-speaking people. Yeah. So they try an accent, and they, they have even a better American accent than Americans do. Yeah. We, I'm amazed when you see people, like, The Wire is probably my favorite show. Half of them are British. Yeah. The Walking Dead, too. Idris Elba That's was right. The Walking Dead. Idr- yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the, the lead guy. Yeah, yeah. half um, of them are. There's yeah, so Andrew, many. Andrew like, Lincoln. Every t- I feel like probably... Over half of the people that I've interviewed about that show, they come in here with a British accent, and I'm You're like, like, not wow. you too. Fuck are you? Not you too. Yeah, Idris Elba, uh, the guy who played the mayor, Dominic West. Um, What's the population of, of, of England? Let's, it's, just, uh, let's just put it out there. Uh, 39 million? 39 million? I'm guessing. I have no idea what I'm talking like about. That's like California. I, I could be wrong. We have like 400 million people, and like all the English people are taking a... 53. I was joking. Well, I, was but I mean, we're six times bigger, and they're... I mean, they're like half of Hollywood. That's 2011. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm they, tired yeah. of them. I think <laughs> no, I wouldn't um, say I'm tired of them, but like, do you do theater as well? Do you do no, stage I stuff? I wish I did, man. I'm like, I got to be honest with you. I started acting, you know, just to make some money because I bro- I grew up poor. Yeah. And so, like, I, you know, I where'd you grow up? I grew up in Chicago. Oh. I grew up like across the street from Douglas Park. Where is it, that bad? It's, it's bad. I had my first bike for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying, though, no, either. Well, how like, did you get it sucks. taken? How did you get it taken? My it was a Huffy. And it cost a hundred dollars, man, which was crazy. Sure. Like for, and my dad built it and put it together, and I was like, "Oh yes!" And you know, we went across the street with my with my cousin, or I don't know if it was for Christmas or not. But anyway, riding a bike, I just feel a big punch in my chest, and I'm ten years old, man. Sure. And it was like some grown men just like punched me in the in the chest and took my bike, and I remember that they couldn't even put their you know, their legs on the pedal, and it was wow. my first big bike. Yeah, and they just went off, and then my cousin was like, yeah, let's go get him. I was like, yeah, slow down, dude. 
It's what like did, four. What did your dad say? He just built that bike. Oh, he was mad. Yeah, he did. He was mad because if you think about it, he probably made like two hundred fifty dollars a week. Right. So that's a hundred dollars. That's half your your salary. It's almost half his salary. Yeah. So he was really bummed, really upset. But we wouldn't know where to go. You know, we went through like they're, you know they're not going to have it out. And I didn't have my name on it. You yeah. Know? And did you yeah. have, did you have any? Um, and we want to discuss Michael's movie too. Just did you see any violence growing up? You must have. It. To, to, for that to happen thirty minutes after your first bike, was there a temptation that you might get into a gang at that? Because Chicago. No, because so... you know what? To be honest with you, man, I was like, we grew up in church. You know, I'm Christian. I'm still Christian. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I. I, I I don't know, man. Something about my parents, just like, and also I I didn't like taking orders from somebody for their benefit. You know what I mean? Right. Which is a, uh, um, I don't know. I and I could see though, like it, it's 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 tough, man. It's it's not as easy as you think to to not be in gangs, you right. know? Right. Because it's a family, especially if you don't have a dad. Or, or you know parents and then like or, or parents that are there you know I grew up in a loving family we were broke but we like it was a loving family if you're not there and they're like you know, kind of a family it's it's tough for someone who doesn't like taking orders you picked a weird profession cut <laughs> 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 what's it like uh, working with that's Michael true, that's true. working with Michael Shannon oh, he's like one of my favorite people to watch right dude, now dude he's legit he's legit yeah I, and and you know what funny story like I did a movie with him 22 years ago my first movie that I didn't get. Yeah, my, my first movie that I didn't get. Yeah, um, yeah, because I, I was an extra, and he uh, was playing some kid. He had long hair, man, and uh, he sat to my right, and uh, and he was so good. I, you know, I was amazed. Even at nineteen, I was like, "Wow, this is pretty amazing." Uh, he got fired. Um, wow. And I was like, "Why did he get fired?" I was like, "He's like, who, who's that?" I asked one of the producers. He's like, "Yeah, it says the the weird kid. He got fired." He's like, "He was too weird." <laughs> yeah, so and, I don't, I don't, I thought, I thought it was awesome. And your movie's called Twelve Strong. And yeah, it's, it's man. about a bunch of the special forces that were the first ones, uh, as they say, with boots on the ground in Afghanistan after nine yeah. eleven. What branch of the military? Because I went over there in two thousand three and performed for guys that had been there. They first hit Afghanistan in October of two thousand one. Like they were there less than a month after nine eleven. Yeah, are these the, like what? Who are the guys you're portraying? Are they Green Berets or what? Are They're they? Green Berets. Right, and by the way, what did you what did you perform? Comedy? I just did stand up. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's uh, and one of the places we went to was this place. They said these guys never get visitors, and they showed us Saddam's private stock of guns, like his gold guns. Whoa. It was like a tractor trailer thing full of all his actual weapons. Well, he was he was before the cartels started doing that. Oh yeah, yeah. He had a, he had a lot of lovely weapons, and they said that like one of the guys spoke Farsi and one. One of the guys did yeah. this, and they were all like deep cover guys that weren't even, uh, they weren't there fighting, they were there kind of blending in. Yeah, yeah. So it's weird, man. These guys, like, it's 12 guys. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, well, when I, I read the log line, I was like, wow, this is a really interesting story. I'd like, I'd love to, I'd love to see where it goes. And then I read the script, and it's based on a true story, and I couldn't believe it. It's like basically, it, it's, a, it's a whole new tactic where you put 12 guys on, on the, on some mountain. <clears throat> You know, and they had like these range finders where they had to get close enough to, to you know, point the range finders at this thing and then call in an airstrike and they had to take over this uh, city, which was like the training ground for these terrorists. And, you know, these terrorists, like we obviously we knew what they could what they were capable of um, in, you know, per 9-11. So it was their job to take over the city. And so they, you know, they get along with these warlords and, you know, they get on horseback and none of these guys can ride except one guy. <clears throat> Of course, that's Chris Hemsworth, uh, his character, <laughs> and then, uh, uh, yeah, and then they, they go in and take over the city, and it's crazy, man. When you re when you meet, I'm sure, like how you met the, these Green Berets, like it takes a special kind of person to do that kind of, you know, that kind of job. Somebody who can overcome their fear that way, you know. Uh, the warlord you meet is he a guy that you're with? Does he know what you're there for? Yeah, I mean, like the CIA goes in first. They get all the intelligence. They brief the guys. They get the right guys, you know. And they're, uh, they some some of the guys don't even have weapons, and they're you know going around. Um, it takes a special kind of person to be that guy too, just to get intel. Um, but that, yeah, we join forces, and you know, it, it's kind of cool too, like just to know as an American that there's people out there that they're not all terrorists, right? You know, there's a lot of good. The majority are actually good people. I I think that Sam disagrees, but I actually believe <laughs> that's that. Not, that's not the case. Sam don't disagree. <laughs> he's not. He's not speaking of me but, accurately. Do you know how they would get intel from some of these guys too? I don't know if the no. movie shows this. No, oh, gifts, they, gifts, Viagra. They would give a lot of these old warlords Viagra, and they couldn't believe that it enabled because a lot of them had like a bunch of wives, and now these older guys were able to have sex with a lot of the women who they were married to. Oh, Viagra, man. they thought was much a miracle, to, much to the but, chagrin of the women. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, but got, or maybe not. <laughs> no, but here's the thing, though. Like, how do you introduce this? Like, they take this pill. They're surrounded with by a bunch of guys. 
But they also you know have a bunch I mean? of wives too. They have Around a bunch of wives. The, the fighting area? No, no, no. By the warlords in the villages. They, no, no. That's yeah, oh, but to prove that they work. To prove saying. that they work, he's like, take this, and he's like, oh, this is really uncomfortable. Hey, this will help you have sex with your wife. We'd like some information. Have this one on us. Then come back. You'll yeah, tell us exactly. what you want to know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly.